Okay, good morning. Uh, it's the Urban Street Warrior Charlie here. Um, so yesterday was an adventure unto itself, getting somewhere that would take our bikes in Lisbon. So it's not doesn't seem to be a very bike friendly city, either in the landscape where it's very hilly, lots of steps. So a lot of roads are actually steps and people are very not keen to take your bicycles. So we finally found a place that would take the bicycles and it was really cheap actually. It's like $50 a night that we're euros spending. 50 euros a night for an apartment on ground floor. So you can just roll the bikes in, has a little courtyard. Um, we're off now to the lawyers uh, for a meeting about my residency. So PJ's already a resident of Portugal and I'm just gonna come in on a spousal visa, yeah, spousal residency. So hopefully that will go well. Uh, and I might take you through the process on a later uh, podcast. Okay. But what about this afternoon? There's something exciting! This afternoon we're planning on going to the Maritime Museum, which has a little submarine, which unfortunately looks like it's um, it's not opened at the moment, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can get on board. I spent uh, like about 10 years on Australian Oberon class submarines, so I'm very keen on, on visiting submarines. It yeah. was a very, very happy time of my life. Built in 1960, this commemorates Prince Henry the Navigator and also features other leaders in the expansionist period of the Portuguese nation. Lisbon has redeemed itself somewhat. It has a cycle path that runs next to the water it's dead flat goes for quite a long way and it's got lots of interesting things to see along the way there's museum after museum there's a power station which we're going to stop on the way back an old coal-fired power station and uh, I used to work at coal-fired power station so I'd be very interested to tour it yeah museum and there's museums and there's a few monuments there's this little castle that's completely surrounded by water and uh, yeah, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. And we're going to the, Marit uh, the Navy Museum on the way back, which surprisingly is not next to the water. What's a hedgehog? Yeah, it's a hedgehog. Why is that a hedgehog? Oh, that's just what they're called. What does it do? Uh, these come off and they go into the water and they're for any submarine. So they're oh. like little depth charges. Well, that's not a hedgehog, good. they're just poof, poof, poof. What are you doing, Charlie? I'm finding somewhere for Miss Fussy Pants to have dinner because she's a vegan and you know, vegans are difficult to cater for at the best of times. But in such a small city as this, it's very difficult. Well... And she's very particular. I don't think so. The Kraken, she used to suck down ships whole with all the men inside of it, but now she's more discerning in what she eats. <laughs> it has to be plant-based. 
only one one uh, <laughs> one sailor, not the whole boat. <laughs> tradition in Portugal is a dessert that translates to Berlin ball and it's something that people eat at the beach. People in Australia eat hot chips of tomato sauce, people here in bikinis eat what is essentially a donut filled with custard uh, at the beach and Charlie's about to experience his very first one. So handsome, what do you think of the Berlin balls? They were good, they taste like a, do a donut without the hole and it's got cream in it so I wouldn't say they're a gastronomical delight that defies all explanation, but they're okay. You won't be the butt of any jokes today, Charles, don't worry. Okay, we just dropped our bikes off at a storage place called Perfect Space and uh, we're going away for about a month, just shortly less than a month, for me to finish up work. And um, yeah, we looked around at quite a few different places. There's people that sort of cater towards people doing the Camino and they charge about four to five euros a day to store your bicycles. And uh, this place here charges 28 euros, oh no, 29 euros a month, and that includes both bicycles. Yeah. So it's 14.90 a month per bicycle. It's secure. You get a code so you can go and get them whenever you like. They just take the one month, um, and there's no contract. There's a contract, but there's there's no need to extend it. No. And if you want to rent something to keep your panniers in or something like that. There's one metre squared uh, storage lockers yeah. and they're about 25 euros a month. Or 29, or you, something like that. Or you can upgrade to a two metre one which would be big enough to put the bikes in as well and they're about $39 a month. Which is a lot cheaper than four 
or five a, a night plus also then you have to pay for luggage separately and all that stuff if you're doing storage through the others so yeah so not sponsored just love a bargain <laughs> yeah and there was a bicycle path to this one all the way from lisbon we took about it was about eight kilometers from lisbon yeah in a built-up area and there's a metro station right next nearby so you can just catch the train back no fooling around on the escalator no we behave ourselves So we're just in this like bakery and this lady's like really good salesperson. I think I haven't seen this for ages, so easy too. She's like, would you like the three, what is it like, the three plus one offer? Yeah, you get one, buy three, get one free. And I was like, no, and he's like, yes. <laughs> so of course she does it. And then at the end I was like, you're a terrible influence. And she's like, so I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> like, cheeky bugger. You're devastated, aren't you, Charles? I'm very upset. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll eat them tomorrow. You know, like that extra two. <laughs> PJ's like, bullshit, you will. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, I will. And then she's like, see you tomorrow. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's just between you and me. <laughs> yeah, secret, secret handshakes, huh? But uh, the customer service here in Lisbon is fantastic. People are very nice. PJ is never ready. Like she get, made me get out of bed and she's like, oh, you know, like, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Of course I get out of bed, I get dressed. Do you think she's ready? No, I gotta wait and wait and wait. She's never ready. I think she just gets so used to procrastinating that it becomes her normal state of life. But I just had on the camera to say that tonight's adventure is going to be a board games meetup at a vegan cafe. It will be the first thing we've done that's social on this trip and it's a bit of a risk so we're going to suss it out when we get there and see whether or not we feel comfortable with it but pj's pretty anti-social she's a horrible person yes that's one of the things yeah. we have in common it's great you know and, i wouldn't you know, be surprised if they lock the door when they see it coming anyway we'll see how we go i'm just put upon by this little minx next to me the kraken or you know banana fingers uh jonah <laughs> she's just always like torturing me it's like you know these vegans yes they don't they're not mean to animals but by god they're mean to their partners <laughs> they're just like torture 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 poor charlie you know, and here i am you know just poor innocent me a babe out in the wilderness just looking for you know shelter and what i find is a a horrid horrid witch that's moved in with me and it's just like making her life's mission to slowly torture me to death. The board games night was an absolute hoot. It was a great way to finish this adventure. Once more onto the breach.